A group of Canadian gymnasts have launched a class action lawsuit against Gymnastics Canada and six of its affiliated provincial organizations. The lawsuit claims they turned a blind eye to years of physical, mental and sexual abuse by coaches and staff. Hillary Johnstone is in Ottawa and has the details on the story today. Hillary, good morning. Good morning, Heather. Well, as part of this proposed or class action lawsuit, what it alleges is that there was a toxic culture of control that uh, allowed abuses to take place over decades. So starting in the 1970s all the way up to present day. And as you mentioned, uh, the defendants in this case are Gymnastics Canada, but then also the governing bodies uh, in six different provinces, including Ontario and British Columbia. The only named plaintiff in this case, Amelia Klein, a former elite gymnast, says that uh, not only did she suffer at the time when she was a gymnast, but that she continues to suffer today, both from uh, physical ailments, but then also psychological ones uh, as well. There are some 20 other unnamed plaintiffs. And in this case, uh, they say that the defendants, so Gymnastics Canada and all these other go governing bodies, caused or contributed to the abuse of gymnasts by creating both a culture and an environment where this abuse could occur, uh, where they did not feel like they could speak up. Uh, and as a result, they've suffered a number of injuries, they allege, including a training-induced seizures, ongoing back and neck injuries, chronic pain, a hamstring fractures as well, eating disorders, stunted growth, anxiety, and insomnia. Of course, none of this has been proven uh, in court yet, but this is what we are hearing from some of these gymnasts, that uh, they do feel that they were subjected to this uh, and that there was this culture created uh, that did not allow these abuses to be properly investigated. This is something that we've been hearing about of late because dozens of current and retired gymnasts also, Hillary, wrote an open letter to Sport Canada and they too talked about abuse and mistreatment in the sport of gymnastics. Where does that stand? That's right. So that was back in March, Heather. And since then, hundreds of other athletes and parents have come forward to sign that letter. And at the time, Gymnastics Canada said that uh, it would do what it could to try and improve the environment, committed to try and making some of those improvements. Uh, but as you say, this is sort of the latest step in all of this. Ever since that letter was penned back at the time, we heard from gymnasts at the time about some of the abuses that they were facing. This lawsuit, one further step uh, in all of that. Hillary, thank you very much. Hillary Johnstone is in Ottawa. And with us this morning is the named plaintiff, the lead plaintiff in this particular case. I want to introduce you to Amelia Klein, who is with me this morning. Amelia, thank you so much for being here and uh, sharing your story. Former gymnast, as I said, the named plaintiff and all of this, and really the spokesperson for this group of former gymnasts. Thank you for being with me today. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All the way from Langley, B.C., no less, early, early in the morning. Listen, uh, Amelia, I want to bring in a little bit of the statement of claim from this lawsuit. Again, as I was mentioning, claiming physical, sexual, and or psychological abuse. But here's the statement of claim. The defendants caused or contributed to the abuse of gymnasts by creating a culture and an environment where abuse could occur a culture of env and an environment where abuse could occur. Could you describe that culture for us, Amelia? Sure, and it's, um, it's a culture that we're seeing exists not just in Canada, but around the world. It's this culture of cruelty. It's a culture of complete obedience of gymnasts to their coaches, which really becomes a breeding ground for these types of abuses. Um, and it really has been couched in the terms of, well, this is just tough coaching and this is what it takes to win medals and to go to the Olympics. Um, and of course, we know that that's not true. And we know that um, child abuse is actually not something that helps people get to the Olympics. Um, but it, it is unfortunately a feature of this sport. Um, and that's really what we're trying to change with all of this. And, and we'll get to the change that you're hoping for in a second, but what is it about gymnastics that make it susceptible to that type of culture? I, I think there are some unique features with um, gymnastics, especially because it is a, it really is a sport of children. Um, you start the sport very, very young, and that really means that you're extremely vulnerable at a very early age. Um, to all of these things. And you're taught to look up to your coach, to obey them unquestioningly. Um, and so by the time you're 10, 11, and you're in the elite levels, um, you're really unable to stand up for yourself or to really even recognize that the things that are happening are even abuse to begin with.
Okay. <laughs> so if you would, share some of your own experience in that culture as a gymnast. Sure. I um, So I grew up in the sport, as many do, um, and I had wonderful coaches all the way up until the last three years of my career. And those last three years, unfortunately, were filled with daily experiences of verbal, psychological, and physical abuse, ranging from um, name-calling and belittling to uh, weighing us and telling us not to eat to overstretching us to the point of uh, injury in my case where my coach in fact uh, stretched my leg so forcibly that it ripped my hamstring and, and took a piece of my pelvis with it. So there were um, a variety of things that we experienced on a daily basis and unfortunately that was the last three years of my career. That was a particularly gruesome detail from, uh, from the, the statement of claim, the hamstring avulsion <laughs> fracture stretched mm -hmm. it and took a piece of your pelvis with it. What have been the lasting consequences of that then for you, Amelia? Um, so I have ongoing chronic pain, as many do. Um, I've had sciatica since I was 14. Um, and, you know, of course, there's psychological consequences. I, I still suffer from nightmares and uh, disordered eating on occasion. I, I don't weigh myself very specifically because I've learned over the years that um, that will cause me to sort of spiral into eating disorder territory. So I, um, I've had to adapt and I've had to uh, seek a lot of treatment for uh, the after effects even 20 years later. You're the only person we know so far in this lawsuit as the name played Tiff. Why have you come forward to lead it into the courts? Uh, well, I, I feel very privileged to be in this position. Um, I'm, I'm someone who's had 20 years to process my trauma. I'm also a lawyer myself, so I am uh, familiar with the legal system. I'm comfortable in a courtroom, so I have somewhat of a unique skill set to bring to this. Um, but really what it is is I, I think I have earned the trust of this survivor community, which I feel so grateful for, and I've had the opportunity to speak to so many over the last year or two. Um, and, and really, I'm just a conduit for their voices, um, and I feel so privileged to be in that position. So far, we know of about 20 other former gymnasts who have joined in this class action lawsuit, hoping it works its way through the court. How many more do you think could join in? Uh, well, the, the class doesn't officially get crystallized until certification, which mm -hmm. won't be for a while still. Um, but we've seen, you know, over just even the last two months that um, there are potentially hundreds, if not thousands of potential claimants. Um, the open letter, the response that it's received, uh, last I heard it was at over 450 signatories. And my understanding is that most of those signatories are survivors themselves. So at a certain point, we do expect that the class will probably at least reflect what we're seeing with the open letter and, and perhaps even larger than that. And we were talking about that too earlier, the open letter from dozens of current and retired gymnasts uh, written to Sport Canada about what's been going on within Gymnastics Canada. But it's interesting, you know, it's not just gymnastics. Gymnastics is uh, taking a particular focus right now. But we've seen in Canada too, as you well know, Amelia, uh, rowing, rugby, bobsleigh. In this country, athletes coming forward to talk about toxic cultures and environments and abuse and mistreatment over their years as elite athletes in this country. And I'm wondering what you're seeing in terms of athletes really using their position, really finding their voices and what this moment seems to be. Yeah, it's it's incredibly inspiring. Um, I know, you know, the, the open letter was very much inspired by the bobsleigh athletes who came before. Um, and I think we are seeing a very unique moment in history, in the history of sport, where athletes are finally realizing that they have power, they have voice, and they can use that voice to affect the kind of changes that they're, they're wanting to see in their sports. And I think the fact that so many athletes are coming forward from so many different sports also speaks to the systemic nature of these things, not just within gymnastics, but within sport itself. Specifically within gymnastics, though, what are the what is the change, or what are the changes you hope to bring about through this? I think what we're really hoping is, um, and it's a, a tall ask, but we're we're looking for wholesale culture change. At the end of the day, um, we're looking for an athlete-centered approach to gymnastics delivery that simply hasn't existed up until now. Um, we're looking to ensure that the next generation doesn't have to go through what we've gone through over the last 
30, 40 years. Um, so it's it's a lot to ask for, and, and we know that it's ambitious, but um, we simply can't allow children to continue being abused in the sport. Amelia Klein, thank you so much for the time this morning, especially very early, as I mentioned, but particularly, as you're aware, there are stages ahead with the certification and whatnot in a class, but uh, launched for sure and something that we will be paying close attention to as this proceeds through. Thank you for the time today. Thank you so much.